Hey, did you like the intro? I thought it was festive. So, welcome to the Philosophy of Data Science series. I thought it'd be fun to celebrate the kickoff of the series by moving to a different corner of the podcast and basement with a little bit more natural light and go over what we sh what you should expect in the series. So, first off and most importantly, thank you so much for your time. I know that the time demands on people in STEM fields these days is extremely high, it's staggering, and that there's a premium place on your time and that your time is very valuable. And so I wanted to start off by saying that I appreciate your time, and I have worked to make sure that every episode of the series is, will give you something tangible, some beneficial piece of knowledge for your practice of data science. In the series, we'll be covering the application of scientific reasoning to data science, and I think that data science is a great place to be exploring this, both because data science is, of course, playing an extremely important role in scientific development, but data science is also a really interesting field in which to be examining scientific reasoning because data science is a field that brings in many different modes of scientific reasoning. Uh, it brings in mathematical deduction and a lot of those uh, math mathematical guarantees that we uh, that we're familiar with, but also brings in a lot of issues like scientific inference and uh, the inductive aspects of scientific inference. And so I think that we're in a really interesting field where we see all these different modes of scientific reasoning coming together. And what's really nice as a data scientist is that you can excel by being good at any one of these individual areas. So given your own scientific style, there are many places in which you can really excel and shine in a scientific field. So I think that we have a very interesting thing here where one, scientific reasoning is of course fundamental to the practice of good data science, but also that data science is a good place where we are bringing in quite a variety of topics and a variety of um, ideas that have very long histories and a very long uh, philosophical background to them. Now, the series itself is divided into a number of sessions, um, and I'm treating these sessions as you would a conference where a conference will group sessions by related topics. So each session will comprise a series of episodes on a related topic, and these are meant to be complementary. Furthermore, the uh, sessions will be ordered in such a way that if there are any ideas or any material that you'll need for a later session, it will be introduced in an earlier session. The goal of this is to make it a 100% self-contained uh, series. And the sessions are ordered such that new concepts are going to be introduced before we actually are applying them. So you don't have to worry about some new idea being brought up and you have no idea what they're talking about. We order this in a way such that you, you can watch it from beginning to end of the series and you are well prepared step by step. We build on that knowledge together. So uh, we aren't assuming that you're coming in with a particular level of baseline knowledge. We will cover each subject in order and any knowledge prerequisites for a uh, later session will be covered in earlier sessions. So again, you don't need to go hunting around for extra information to supplement what you need to know. Now for the series schedule, uh, new episodes will be released at 1 p.m. Eastern time every Wednesday. And if, these, if it's going well and the series is well received and people enjoy the content, we will also be ins inserting some uh, bonus episodes to expand the breadth or the depth of the uh, topics covered. Every episode will be available on YouTube and also a variety of podcasting platforms like Stitcher, Podbean, iTunes, etc., uh, Podchaser. So, um, and every episode will be hosted ad infinitum, so this isn't like a webinar series where you have to be watching at a specific time and then it comes down. The episodes stay up so people can watch them at their convenience. If you want to forward an episode to a friend or to your class or to your students, um, you can send it off to them and be assured that that episode will still be up there when it reaches them and uh, so people, everyone can watch it in their own good time. We're at a time where people's schedules need as much flexibility as possible. Now on the issue of podcasting, for those listening on audio only, uh, just as a quick assurance, the vast majority of our episodes are going to be interviews or highly listenable uh, presentations. So the vast majority of this should be easy to listen to, although we will be providing some extra bits in the videos. For example, the uh, when a paper gets mentioned, I'll pop the, a picture of the paper up so people can easily reference it. But uh, if you are just listening, the vast majority of this content should be easy to listen to. There shouldn't be any problem. I want you to enjoy that, the listening experience as much as someone who's watching can enjoy the watching experience. And uh, furthermore, if there is a, um, an episode where you really should just be watching the video, I will warn you in advance. Um, I'll give you a little of a preface saying, you know, this is a better video to 
this is a video, it has video content, you should just watch it, because obviously I don't want you listening and you know wasting your time listening to something that's hard to follow. So with the remaining time, I thought it'd be good to cover uh, the first few sessions that are coming up. I think we have a really great speaker lineup, not only in the first few sessions, but throughout. And um, so might as well show those off and discuss them a bit, and also a bit of the reasoning behind why we put these sessions first. Now the very first session, our introductory session, is called Scientific Reasoning for Practical Data Science. The goal of this originally was to convince people that thinking about things like the philosophy of science and scientific reasoning for data science is a useful endeavor. And so I originally created this to uh, help convince people that yes, a lot of top scientists and a lot, a lot of top statisticians and data scientists are very interested and in, involved in these topics. Um, little did I know that actually the response to this would be so great that apparently everyone else also already knew um, that yeah, scientific reasoning is a very interesting topic. But still, I thought that this, uh, this first session would be very good at sort of um, pinpointing some of the main reasons why people think that the issue of scientific reasoning is of value to us data scientists. So uh, the very first session is actually, well, it'll be me, and I'll be talking about uh, applying scientific reasoning and critical reasoning to machine learning in healthcare. And while I know that a lot of machine learning work, they show the, um, the success stories, I'm actually going to show you uh, one of the first times back uh, when I was a uh, doctoral student, and I just totally flopped on my face with a machine learning project because I wasn't using good scientific reasoning and how some of my, what I thought were fairly innocuous scientific assumptions caused me to have uh, unsuccessful machine learning um, projects. And by correcting those, we moved ahead and could then have very successful um, machine learning outcomes. So that's the very first session. The next episode, I'm very proud to say, is going to be with Andrew Gelman. And what uh, Andrew's going to be talking about is uh, how scientific reasoning is very useful uh, for Bayesian statistical practice. So obviously he's written a huge amount on the subject. I think he has influenced a large number of statisticians on where the philosophy of science and scientific reasoning comes into statistical practice. So of course he was someone who we wanted to have, you know, right from the bat, talking about those ideas. And uh, he has a very interesting interview that I think is also a lot of fun. He's a funny guy, and so it's really fun to uh, uh, interact with Andrew. Next up is Kathy Enzer from Rice University. She's also the 2022 American Statistical Association president. Um, and Kathy's gonna be talking about scientific communication and how better understanding uh, your scientific foundations is essential in order to communicate your own contributions as a data scientist. So her research covers a wide range of topics, uh, including uh, finance and environment um, and public health. And so I thought that she, and she does a very good job at describing why by better understanding your scientific foundations, you can, un you can better explain your own value and what you're adding through your data science projects. Our final two speakers for the first session are Mihaela Vandershaar of Cambridge University and Kevin Zolman of Carnegie Mellon University. Mihaela is going to be discussing how creativity is a fundamental skill of uh, machine learning. And so some people might wonder, well, why are we talking about the creativity when it comes to scientific reasoning? And I think that uh, Mihaela shines a light on precisely why we want the role that creativity plays even in scientific reasoning um, and how uh, resolving important scientific problems does require creativity. So she gives a great presentation on that. It is a fundamental skill and for someone who is a very well respected creative machine learning scientist, uh, Mihaela is probably one of the best people we can get to to talk to you guys about that. And finally, we have Kevin Zolman. So Kevin is going to be providing us with our uh, first formal taste to philosophy of science and how the philosophy of science has very fundamental ideas that are applicable to data science. So um, he will be something of the Virgil leading us into our inferno of uh, philosophy of data science. He'll be leading us through that and providing a very a gentle introduction to the subject. And so I think that that is, um, he's gonna help us lay a lot of the framework for how we're going to be uh, viewing and sort of uh, appreciating some of the later contributions that people bring into the series. So, as I said before, that we'll always give you um, content and learning content before we bring in the harder topics. Kevin will be bringing that to us, so he'll be uh, giving us a nice, friendly introduction to these topics, and I think that you'll really enjoy those because um, having a formal introduction to the philosophy of science, I think, was one of the most foundational aspects of my own uh, career in machine learning and better understanding 
how to reason through and critically resolve important problems in data science and machine learning. So thanks so much to Kevin for providing that. Now for session two, essential reasoning skills for data science, we have an all-star cast of early career researchers. We have Alina Bessonen, Joseph Wu, and Hoob Brower. Alina, Joseph, and Hoob will be providing us with uh, more learning content, and they'll be covering three of the major modes of logical reasoning, um, which are deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, and abductive reasoning. Um, these three forms of reasoning, I feel as if they aren't really, uh, they aren't discussed explicitly enough in statistics and data science, despite the fact that we make use of all three of those on a daily basis in our jobs. And just in practical data science, we on a daily basis make use of all three of these modes of reasoning. I think that's one of the things that makes data science so interesting. But it seems like very rarely do we actually explicitly mention, well, this is the mode of reasoning that I'm taking for this uh, analytical step. And so I thought that it would be very useful for us uh, just to be reintroduced to these, add it to our active vocabulary, and then so while we're having these later discussions, um, for example, in sessions three and session four, we give them a better appreciation of specifically how people are going about their scientific reasoning process. So thank you to Alina, Hoob, and Joseph for providing us with that content. It's very helpful. Now, after we've had the baseline of session one and two, we're going to jump into our keynote sessions and session four, which I think is really exciting. And this is ones where we're actually going to go through examples of how some of the best data scientists and machine learning scientists are applying their scientific reasoning to, uh, the, to their data science practice. Now, I know that a lot of data science presentations really focus on what I consider to be the reverse of this issue, which is how data science is advancing scientific conclusions, how data science is advancing scientific fields. This, on the other hand, is going to be a little bit of a reversal where we're going to have people talking about how the scientific reasoning of what they're doing informs the data science or informs the machine learning or the algorithmic approach to their work. Now, of course, this is inextricable with the fact that they are applying these two scientific fields, but I think that what the reason that I'm highlighting these ones is that these are prime examples of people doing data science and machine learning work that is heavily influenced by scientific reasoning. So the people who were highlighting these are, I think, the people who are doing a fantastic job at um, progressing scientifically sound data science and scientifically sound machine learning methods and are also developing the machine learning methods that are, I think, most promising to be advancing the scientific fields as well. Now, we haven't entirely finished recording session four yet, but for some quick uh, names, the great Cynthia Rudin will be showing up for one of those. Very excited. Um, she's obviously always great to hear from. Um, we also have one of my personal favorites in Gaussian process work, David Duvenot. And David's going to show us what I think is some extremely interesting and important work on how people might formalize that scientific inference process and um, uh, for the purpose of automating um, sort of the modeling process. So I think that that, that type of work, again, highlights how someone with a strong appreciation of scientific reasoning is applying it to uh, cutting-edge machine learning. We have a huge number of speakers, though, um, who are going to be covering these types of topics. And session four is going to be quite large because there are so many people working on great examples of this work. Um, and we'll also be introducing some methods, and I think uh, we're going to be uh, covering some methods, for example, uh, copulas, and covering methods from the perspective of, well, why is this method so scientifically profound, or why is this method so you know scientifically uh, sensible? So not just covering it from a technical perspective, but certain methods I think are very interesting from a scientific perspective and are worth giving a coverage from the perspective of scientific reasoning. After session four, um, obviously the party's just gonna keep on going. We are gonna have more sessions including things like uh, defining what is scientific progress and what does it mean to make progress in the field of data science and what does it mean to progress the field of statistics. And so we're going to be bringing in uh, statistical experts describing uh, what they think it means to be progressing these fields. We're also going to be bringing in some philosophical issues with relation to data science. So, for example, the ethics of artificial intelligence. And I think that's going to be a really interesting one because not only will we be covering these issues and uh, these issues that need to be resolved from a philosophical standpoint, but we're also going to be bringing in examples of people who are actively doing research 
to help resolve some of these issues. So people doing the machine learning and algorithmic work to help resolve certain of the ethical dilemmas that are currently happening in AI. So we won't just be providing with the problems, we'll be looking at some of the people who are helping provide the solutions. And one more session that I'll plug, because I think it's gonna be really interesting, is uh, we're gonna be comparing why different scientific fields are not synonymous with each other. So very frequently what we see in, uh, for example, media representations of scientific progress, it conflates a large number of scientific fields that oughtn't to be conflated. So for example, uh, medical science versus clinical science, um, or alternatively, clinical science versus epidemiological science. A large number of these things where um, they're commonly represented as these synonymous scientific endeavors, when really the conclusions in the way that they come about their conclusions are very different. And of course the data analysis that is involved in coming to those conclusions is very different as well. So I think that this is actually gonna be a real, uh, real uh, meaty topic right there, where we go through and explicitly compare different scientific fields and try to better understand why these different fields aren't synonymous. So for example, there's that classic cartoon where it's you know saying, well, um, why don't we just uh, represent all of uh, biology as chemistry or represent all chemistry as physics? And the fact is that there are certain aspects of these fields that don't really reduce well to other levels, at least with regard to um, our current scientific capabilities. So I thought it would be good to go through examples like that and help flesh those out because the data analysis aspect of those scientific fields is a fundamental part of why some of these fields aren't reducible into each other. So I hope that sounds interesting to you all. Um, I really enjoyed uh, making this series. It's obviously not quite done yet, but um, as, as it goes along, I hope you enjoy it. Again, I've endeavored to make every episode worth your time, and I do think that this series will help practicing data scientists, whether you're early career or late career, better, better understand and appreciate some of the different facets. Um, so thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your uh, time and your support for the series. And see you next week. Hey guys, it's Glenn. Thanks so much for listening to this most recent episode of the Philosophy of Data Science. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider leaving a like, a comment, and hitting that subscribe and bell button, or small channel in every bit helps. If you have a lab, a department, some students or some colleagues you think would enjoy this episode, please consider sending it along. Again, every bit helps, and we really appreciate your word of mouth. Our next episode on the Philosophy of Data Science will be coming out 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Wednesday of next week, so we look forward to seeing you then. But if you can't wait to get more data science, machine learning, and statistical content, feel free to look around the rest of the channel. We have a large number of playlists, including things like machine learning for healthcare, uh, ethics and AI, and things like that. So give a look around. There's plenty more content for you to enjoy. You can also check out our website to not only see past episodes, but what's coming up and see who our sponsors are. Thank you to our sponsors for your support. Now, while the views discussed on the show typically range between extraordinary and mind-blowing, the stated views don't necessarily represent those of the host, our sponsors, my employer, your employer, the speaker's employer, or anyone else not saying those words. And as always, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. See you next week.